Dior, and that was a tune called Out of the Fog by Tom Morgan, and uh, this once again is part two of my Jazz Drummer's Reading Workbook series. So this is the last thing in this chapter. We're going to be going all the way back today to page 10, which is the start of the upbeat etudes. So let's take a look at this first one on page 10. And as we talked about in the last video, you have to set these parameters. So you can do this a, a number of different ways. The first way, just play the snare drum. Second way, add the bass drum as far as setting up the figures. Then you can catch the figures with bigger fills. And then you can even solo over it for practice. So these are short sounds now, these particular uh, couple of etudes. I think there's four or five of them here. Then we'll turn the page and do the longer ones, and then we'll have the mixed ones. That tune used both short and long upbeat sounds. So the upbeat is basically on the ands. So one and, two and, three and, four and, or one, two, three, four and. So there's lots of different ways to set that up. The classic way is, right? Or with the triplet. But you saw there in my little demo, I was trying to catch it uh, as many ways as possible, those figures. And you saw how I was doing lots of different kinds of setups. So the trick is to learn lots of different setups so you're just not repeating yourself all the time. And then it just gets boring if you do that. So I would suggest listening to great big band drummers like Mel Lewis, great at catching figures, uh, Peter Erskine with Stan Kenton, Maynard Ferguson. Of course, uh, Sonny Payne, Sonny Greer, Count Basie, Ellington bands. Uh, those guys were terrific. Really, anybody with Basie, Harold Jones, Duffy Jackson, all those great drummers. There's so many of them. Jeff Hamilton's great big band drummer. Uh, John Riley's a wonderful big band drummer. So uh, just listen to a lot of these folks, and you'll hear many different setups. Of course, his buddy Rich, who would play the most amazing kind of setups, but he's very, very choppy, so may not be able to copy everything he does. 
So let's start with this upbeat etude on page 10. The first way I'm going to do it is just with my snare drum. Okay, so let's show you that first. Okay, so you could hit those pretty hard. They're marcato, and that would be the snare drum. The other way to catch them would be with the hi-hat, like this. That's trickier because you got to come over. And the way I do that is I get right back to the cymbal. So I'll play that uh, for you. Okay, so you see how short that is. A little of that goes a long way. I'm playing them a little louder here today. I probably would not play them too loud. You don't want to wipe the band out. Now, I'm going to play uh, these figures setting it up with just the bass drum now. So you heard how I just hit the bass drum hard and then the figure right before it. So the eighth note before it. Okay, doom bop, boom bop. Now we'll set the figures up. So the choked cymbal thing is something I use very rarely, but I just wanted to show you that. Uh, that is something you can do, but use it very sparingly. Okay, so we'll go on to the next one, and this one gets a little busier. So we'll do this full out, a few fills, some short notes, some hi-hat. Uh, we're not going to do the same thing for everyone here. We'll be here all day. So I'll kind of play this like I would play it with a big band. And this is track 48. So that was really short sounds with the hi-hat, and I'm breaking the time. Now, this is not breaking the time. So I'm playing more time, like the bass is walking there, so I'm not filling it all the way. Okay, let's try the next one. This one's in 3-4, tricky. So there, uh, I'm not playing anything regular on the hi-hat. I'm not playing boom, chick, chick, boom, or anything. I'm floating that hi-hat. I have lots of videos on that if you want to look up hi-hat coordination. Okay, that's something you want to do when you're catching this many fills because you can get stuck easily. And I'm using uh, the bass drum a little more here. Okay, so that's also what you can use for the short, loud sounds. Finally, we get to this one on the bottom, which is an upbeat and a downbeat etude.
this is a good one to solo over. So let me show you a little of that. And then uh, we turn the page here, and we have a page of uh, uh, upbeat figures where he gives you the examples. We're going to skip right to page 12, where we have the upbeat etudes, and uh, just upbeats and long sounds. So you're going to catch them with the symbols, uh, maybe long snare buzzes. Usually just a cymbal crash. If you do that, you can use your bass drum to reinforce it or the snare drum, but keep the short sounds under the long sounds. So this is going to be track 68. So that's fairly simple. You see what I'm doing there? I'm just keeping time, but I'm catching those figures within the time. That's obviously the way you want to be able to do this primarily. Okay, now let's set these up with some fills. Again, very big bandy, heavy, okay? Uh, now we'll go to the next one, number 70. And this again is in 3-4. And we'll catch these with little setups playing lighter. So you see how much lighter that is? I'm not, you know, doing these big fills, nothing long, very legato, using the shaft of the stick. Okay, it's real hard not to rush at that tempo. Luckily, this book has a lot of slow uh, tempos as well. And then we'll go to uh, number 72 here, and this is back to 4-4 four, four swing. There's a little hemiola there at the end. It's an implied time signature within another. Later on in the book, he really gets into that. And we'll turn the page and we'll do some upbeat etudes, both short and long sounds. This first one's kind of a long form one. Uh, so let's uh, do this. Oh, by the way, the four bar repeat, watch out for that. Okay, make sure you repeat four bars. That's in the third line. A lot of my students get hung up on that.
So now we get to the second one. Uh, just basically swing three, four, not too aggressive. Uh, you know, lighten up a little on this one and just build to the end. So track 76. That's one of those that has a little bit of a Latin influence there. And number 78. Sometimes when you have these upbeat things, you can you can play upbeats all different kinds of ways. It sounds really good. It complements the band, as you saw uh, I did in that last line. And then we get to page 14. These are downbeat and upbeat etudes, sort of a review of everything we've done so far. And there's three of these. So we'll start with track 80. <laughs> That's, that's a good one, too. All right? Be careful on that first bar. There's no click in the series, so you just got to keep that count off and keep it in your head. And this one, uh, number two, is also kind of Latinish, sort of an Elvin three. And then we get to number three, and we have eight bars up front here. Again, another kind of tricky one, especially that second line with all those uh, short sounds, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that opening uh, demo I did of Out of the Fog with some different views and pay attention to all these different short and long sounds and the way that I also change up the cymbals. You know, uh, if you have a big band cymbal setup, all the cymbals should be crashes and rides. So uh, you can ride on all of these, even this little 16 you can ride on. I don't normally do it, but that's the thing Mel Lewis always preached, you know, all your cymbals should be crashes and ride. So when you listen to this, watch how I change cymbals in different sections. That's really effective, a different timbre under the soloists. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time with the next part of this series. <laughs>